early days of our western frontier have come many legends. Some of these stories are based on fact. Others, no doubt, were conceived in the minds of grizzled old prospectors, too long alone in the hot barren waste, consumed by their one dream, the dream of finding gold. Each one convinced that he would one day hit the biggest bonanza of all. Many of these stories, as you know, concerned Indians. They were the large tribes or nations in Arizona, such as the Apache, the Navajo, Hopi, Zuni, Papago, and many more. California's Indians were divided into smaller tribes. There were a good many of these groups that were all but extinct when the first Spaniard landed. Most of them are far more primitive than their brothers in other territories. Their culture was that of the Stone Age. This story deals with the last days of one such tribe. Already small when Spain first claimed California as her own, their numbers steadily dwindled as they waged an unending war against the white man. They refused to be converted to Christianity by the padres of the missions. The white man was their mortal enemy, to be killed on sight. While their number was decreasing, the number of their enemy was increasing. The Anglo or Yankee had migrated west and was embarked upon the feverish search for gold. The remnants of this tribe had been driven back into the hills in an area which was thought to be rich in gold. Individual prospectors and parties of men had gone into these hills never to return. There came a time when the only remaining members of this tribe were women. Their men had been all killed in their ceaseless battle with the white men or had died of pestilence. Ironically, the leader of these women was herself white. She had been captured as a baby, and the only reason she had been spared was the fact that her hair was the color of yellow gold. To the superstitious minds of these primitive people, this was a symbol. She had been sent to them by the sun god, and they treated her as a goddess as she grew to young womanhood. Since she had known nothing but the ways of these Indians, their enemy became her enemy, and she fought and killed her own people. This is the story of one party of white men and one white woman who, in their search for gold, encountered these Amazons of the West. You could fill bags with it. Why, there's spots in that creek where the nuggets just reflect the sun at you. Why, doggone it, man. You must be the richest man in this whole territory. Where you got all them bags of gold here? I had them bags of gold, mister. But don't you think for one blame minute them ornery redskins was gonna let me take them out? Lucky to be standing right here. Plum lucky. Just got out with my hide. Well, I never even got out with a price of a drink. When you plan on going back, ain't right you know to let all that Gold, yes, go to waste. As soon as I get me a grub steak and a party of men what's men and ain't afraid to take on the engines, I'm going back. <laughs> yes, you believe that, mister. Why, doggone it, Pam. Ain't we been believing you for the past five years now? <laughs> He hasn't already told you the story. Uh, uh, you know, strangers are his best customers. Hey, he sure tells it like it was the truth. <laughs> He's been telling that story so long, I think he believes it now. Yeah, I, I guess it could be that way. 
<clears throat> now, what do you have? Oh, uh, no, nothing, thank you. I'm not a drinking man. The fact is, the wife doesn't allow it. Uh, I was going to ask you if you knew of some little business a man might get into. You get to hear about everything that goes on in town. <clears throat> well, if you've got the right kind of money, I happen to know that you can pick this place right up. You put some music out there, and you get some nice, shapely uh, entertainers. And then you cut that red eye in half with, uh, you know, that cheap alcohol. Of course, with me as a partner, uh, you know, sort of look, uh, keep an eye on things around here for you. Mister, you'd be riding high on the horn. Well, uh, how much will it take to handle? Five thousand. Oh, oh, no, 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 you're talking way over my head. I haven't got that kind of money. Well, mister, you go out there and see old Pan, and for a few dollars, he'll make you rich. <laughs> so, how much will it take to outfit for three months? Well, dang well, depends on how many you got in the party. Now, to get in and out of Gold Creek, that's the name I gave it, you know. You gotta have upwards to six or seven guns and... Well, what would we need with all of those guns? There'd only be two or three of us. Now, blast it all, man. I'm talking men. Six or seven is what can handle guns. Well, isn't that cutting the gold a little thin? Oh, it'd take a small army to cut that kind of gold thin. I've never seen such gold in all your born days. Oh, all right, all right. Now, plan on six or seven. How much for three months? Well, let's see, by the time you figure horses, guns, grub, ammunition, uh, a little liquor, you got a tab, say, a thousand dollars? I might be able to see that down a bit. And again, if you was to round up a party, what it share expenses? Yeah. Yeah, that might be the way. Oh, I'd hate to pay the whole bill to make somebody else rich. Who is Pam Taggart? He's that prospector I told you about. The one that knows about the gold. I sent you out to try and talk a deal with the owner of the saloon and you come back without talking to him. And have the gall to tell me you wasted your time talking to a stupid old fool? But, but Ruby... I want that saloon. Do you understand? For once in my life, I want to be somebody. I want to run that place and be the queen of the beehive and have all the people come to me for favors. I want to make money. Big money. Ruby, Ruby, you've just said it. That's exactly what's been on my mind. Big money. Well, then go out and buy the saloon. Ruby, honey, forget about that saloon for a minute. That's not what I'm talking about. Besides, if, if you were to be the queen around a place like that, honey, I, I just couldn't stand it. All those men pawing at you. Oh. Ruby, honey, listen to me. Hear me out just this once. Now, we both want big money. But I'm telling you again, I just haven't got the wherewithal to buy a place like that. Before you married me, you sold out a freighting business in Illinois. What did you do with the money? Well, I... I sold out the place because I couldn't make a go of it. Now, now if you've got a place that isn't doing very well, you're not going to get very much for it, are you? Now, now Ruby, listen. This Taggart swears up and down that the gold is there. And I believe him. Why? Well, if, if it wasn't there, say, say he made up this whole story just to mooch a bottle and some food. He wouldn't be willing to risk his life now, would he? Much less three months of hard work and a long trip. Oh, no, no, no. He can get a bottle and food a lot easier than that. Where is this gold supposed to be? at a place he calls Gold Creek. It's deep in Indian territory. Now, honey, it's no picnic to get there, but we can be rich, real stinking rich. 
And we won't have to sweat it out in that lousy saloon for the next 15 years. Listen, Ruby. All we have to do is bag it up. Bags of gold. Look, Mike. It's just a matter of time before some joker will drift in from Texas and spot us. When that happens, we're either on the run or rotting in jail. Now listen, Wade. You know I ain't never had no stomach for battling injuries. Whoever says we're gonna have to get to where we have to battle, huh? You mean we're just... No, I mean we're getting 300 apiece cash. We're getting grub and plenty of ammunition. When we decide to cut our own trail, you tell me who's gonna stop us. Well... 300 ain't much of a stake. Not unless you're planning on going in for that gold by yourself, Condon. No, I'm not. But I figure friend Potter for the rest of a real good stake. Potter's the only fool I know who believes Pat Taggart. <laughs> oh, how do, Mr. Potter? Uh, it's a friend of mine, Mike Horton. Uh, he's, uh, he's in on the deal. Howdy. Well, good. Oh, uh... Those other two men you told me about, uh, they don't want to come in. Looks like we'll have to spend some more time getting the party up to full force. Hunter, I gave you two days. You're up. Either we go now, it's gonna cost you $2,000 for me and Horton. I just haven't got that kind of money, Condon. Party's up to five. Either we go now or we don't go. Well, maybe we should just forget the whole thing. But, well, Taggart's sure not going to like going in shorthanded. Yeah, Taggart. Well, you just tell Taggart that Con and me make up four men. Yeah, could be. Could be. Gain the top of the pass, I couldn't help but take a last look at the town. There was a feeling of security down there. Well, ahead of us, uh, but Ruby, with Ruby it was different. All she wanted to know was whether I was coming or not. When I told her that it might be a long time before we saw the town again, she looked off a moment, then said, we'll see it again, I hope. Do you plan on stopping for the night? Ruby and I aren't up to this type of travel. We're beginning to hurt. You city people ain't quite up to Pan Taggart, are you? Well, reckon I should take it fairly easy on you, because when we hit engine country, you're going to need all the fizz you can muster. There's water a couple miles ahead, and we'll make camp when we hit it. over this outfit tonight? We've only been a day out. Too risky. Besides, I have to look into something. I've been seeing you getting cozy with Potter's wife. You ain't planning on anything with her, are you? Look, Mike, you let me decide what's best. Then you better do some fast deciding, because I ain't getting my scalp lifted for nobody. All right. All right, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow night. Be a lot safer all around, but it's got to be tomorrow night. We'd only been a few days on the trail, but it was long enough to overhang the party with the smell of trouble. From the way Taggart was watching the trail, I figured he was expecting trouble any time. And from watching Condon and Horton, I had a feeling something was brewing there also. I didn't like their little secret powwows. 
I got to worrying that if it all exploded at once, nobody would ever get to see Gold Creek. What is it, Haggard? We aren't getting Indians this quick, are we? No. Don't reckon so. It just caught a twinkle of something back in the hills. Well, what do you think it was? The sun hitting a bit of mica, most likely. Could also be the sun hitting on a rifle barrel, huh? Could be. Move out. climbed about a couple of thousand feet since yesterday, Ruby. A higher altitude makes it colder. Oh, shut up. I don't need an explanation from you. And that's another thing. You better keep a closer watch on your investment. A couple of more days and you won't know what direction he's going in. I think I'll go to sleep. on this Indian scare just to keep us in line. As far as he knows, he's got nothing to worry about us. And I caught him giving the hill some pretty sharp looks when he thought no one was looking at him. And that's all the more reason for us to get it over with now, before somebody moves down on us. Something that Potter's wife said. Makes it doubtful who's got the money. What difference does it make who's got the money? We get everything, don't we? Could be in town, you know. Who with? A bartender? Horton. You've heard of a bank, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a chance we'll have to take, that's all. Because I ain't going another step into no Indian country and just a chance of more money. All right. What about Ruby Potter? Same as the rest. Well, you don't think we're going to take her along, do you? I don't see shooting a woman, Mike. Well, if it'll spoil your breakfast, Condon, leave it to me. Because I got an idea that money-grabbing witch is planning on coming out of this alone. All right. Let's get it over with quick. Trouble? Uh, not that we know of. What can you tell us? 
We got ambushed by a strong party in Anvil Rock. I reckon Curtin and me here is the only two that got away. We've been running from them ever since. Sure could use some grub. Well, come on, I'll poke up the fire. I don't like the looks of this. For two men that have been on the run for a few days, they and their horses look pretty doggone good. But, but they're cavalrymen. Yes, and no. What do you mean? Their gear is army regulation, but part of what they're wearing has been picked up elsewhere. It is? Look, we better go tell Connor. Oh, now, don't go flying off the handle. How do we know they ain't in together? It seems to me Condon and Horton accepted these two pretty easy. Uh, how will we find out? Well, tomorrow morning, we'll tell Condon and Horton that we're aiming on asking the cavalrymen to stick with us to Gold Creek. That'll smoke them out in the open. H how so? Well, if they're in cahoots, they'll agree. If they ain't, they won't want to share grub and gold. Yeah. Yeah. Anything keeping you two from riding? You figured on going your way. Oh, it's the wrong direction for Fort Apache. We didn't know. You know now. We ain't exactly no hurry to get back to Fort Apache. To a court martial for deserting. <laughs> Harsh words. And here's some more to go with them. You ain't riding our way because we don't need you. Now let's get all our cards up on the table. A drunken old fool you got leading you talks a lot when he's drunk and asleep. Now we know what you're out after and we want in. You ain't got a chance in hell. After we overheard you two planning last night? I think you'd better count us in. I think you pressed your luck far enough, soldier boys. Now let's start riding nice and easy. Horton and me seem to think there might be something to what them two were saying about the engines. So we decided we'd do a bit of scouting around. That's a good idea. We'll catch up later. Here they come. Like a couple of prairie dogs, just waiting to be picked off. Here's where General Horton passes sentence on a couple of deserters. if you're still alive.
walking out on us? Well, I ain't putting a thing past them two. We'll know by... came out of nowhere. Apache. But what happened, Condon? What happened? I don't know. An arrow came out of nowhere. I didn't see a thing before, I didn't see a thing after. Oh, that's the Apache's idea of fair play. Then you don't know if there was one or a hundred. There was only one. Else Condon wouldn't be here. I knew we should have hung on to those two army men. What chance have we got now? Stop your whining, Potter. Still with us. How do you know? Here they are. <laughs> Seems like they heard Taggart here talking in his sleep about the gold, huh? You're dang well making that up, Condon. Because I got a notion you're in cahoots with them, too. Condon. <laughs> Better save your fighting for the Indians. You can't gun us down. You need us now. He's right, Condon. He's right. We've got to take them on. From here on in, I call all the bets, Potter, so don't tell me what to do. Could be the party doesn't need you, Condon. You've been trying to run this show ever since we left. Maybe I ought to let you find Gold Creek. Stop it. If we're ever going to reach that gold, we're going to need all the guns and, and wits we can muster. Any of you want to argue against that? What are you on, Mrs. Potter? Why, the side that offers the most. Would you care to make a bid? I might. I have to write it out or I bring it in person. Try the personal Money belongs to me. He didn't earn it. Do you know of a harder way to earn it, Potter? Well, it, it's not any good to him now, anyway. Oh. Then what are you acting so righteous about? You were coming here to get this money yourself. What have you been up to? Nothing that concerns you. What'd he do? Taking his money back from Horton. Seems like your husband doesn't like people getting killed before they earn their pay.
you smooth. They got curtain. Ain't no one engine's gonna tackle a party like this. Wanna have your scalp lifted by a bunch of braves? Tiger's right. If it's run, we run. You run anyway. If anybody's got any ideas on going back, they're going back without me. I'm moving ahead, fast as I can. Way. What do you mean, Ruby? Well, I'll explain it to you. Have you found any gold yet? No, none. Exactly. That's right. Where, where is all this gold he was talking about? And where is he? Out in the bush, dead drunk? Search the bush. Come on. Nothing. Dead or alive. There must be somebody out there. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, don't be waiting around for an engine to make sense. Especially when he's out to kill you. Oh, well, Koo tries for ten years to convince somebody there's gold up here. When he finally makes it back, he gets one minute to feel it between his fingers. And he collects himself a tombstone. Um... I'm sorry it had to be him. I could use a drink. I'll join you, Jones.
Hey, John. John, wake up. What'd you wake me up for? There ain't nothing about. Well, what do you make of it? Well, one thing for sure, they ain't having no square dance. Will they attack? No, I don't think so. How can you be sure? I ain't. I'm just going on the superstition that they believe if they're killed at night, they'll never find their way to the happy hunting ground. It's a lot of consolation, Mr. Jones. Well, take it or leave it. I'm going back to sleep. Did you ever see anything like this? We're rich, Ruby. Rich. We will be if you'll shut up and keep working. Look at this nugget, Ruby. Look at the size of it. That'd look good on your finger, wouldn't it? Get a body out of here. No use in making targets of ourselves. Come on, let's go. Don't you think we ought to put up some kind of marker? What for? Because it's usually done, I guess. Well, it seems kind of lonesome without a touch of somebody cared. Well, you do it then. I'll go look for Jones Gold, huh? Are you planning on getting out tonight? I'm planning on getting out as quick as I can. How quick is that? As quick as I can round up all the sacks of gold, Mr. Potter.
going there. Watching me. I, I wasn't watching you. I, I just came over to have a little talk. Well, you talk. Well, it, it looks like we're the only two left. We've got all the gold in the gear. So? Well, you, you've got to admit we're a long way from out of here. Uh, I, I think we're going to need each other to get out of here with our scalps. Well, maybe so, and, uh, and maybe not. Just getting here cost us two men in the face of a party of seven. That's when we were coming in. Now we're going out. I have a strong feeling those Indians aren't going to let anybody out of here that easy. Not with this gold, they're not. What use have they got for this gold, huh? Well, it, it might be sort of a god or a oh. spirit or an omen to them. You're a superstitious fool, Potter. And a coward, besides. Condon, yes. you know we'll never make it out of here if we try to go it alone. Yeah. Now, look, Condon. You promised me that I go out of here with you, and I'll pay you a thousand. Make it fifteen hundred. Two thousand. Condon, you're not leaving me out here to die. I'm getting out with my gold. I'm getting out. Do you hear Potter. me? Oh, there, Mr. Potter. Hold on now and relax. Easy, Potter. Put yourself down. We're going to travel light, and we're going to travel fast. But we're still going to need some handy guns. And four good eyes, huh? You know what I'm going to do when we hit town? Huh? Tell me about yourself. I'm going to buy that saloon. Yeah. Got to like drinking that much, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. It, uh, I'm going to buy it because of Ruby. She wanted to buy that place real bad before we came out for the gold. Huh? Yeah, I, I can just sit around and... Imagine Ruby all dressed up in a silk dress, walking over to my table and sitting by me, and I can see all those men just staring at her with envy in their eyes. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I, I'm going to buy that saloon. I'm gonna go to your saloon, Mr. Potter. I'm gonna have that drink. For old time's sake, huh? <laughs>
Revenge of the Virgins. Once again, the trespassers have paid the penalty, and the legend continues. Beware the savage guardians of the Golden Horde. <laughs> 